well if you like a bit of custom and also some bling hang around because we've got some really cool stuff coming out from the nostalgia lane and motorbike alley at the hot rod and custom auto expo so this is part two so if you're interested in the show car stuff that's on part one and then i'm going to run through all these cars so man look at some of these customs they're just down in the weeds looking wide plenty of chrome and I took the opportunity to film these, this was Friday night, so you can see it's dark outside and it just makes these cars really pop, because in the morning the sun's shining through and they're just not as nice, so good opportunity to grab them, and they're all lined up there. Last year was all customs, and there's a really good video on, if you're into custom cars that we did last year from this event, it's just all on customs, so check that out. I love these cars. Now this black um, pickup, ute, whatever you want to call it, I first seen it up at Cooley last year, and man, it's a stunner with the, the gloss and satin black and the gold. And then talking about green, how about that? So plenty of um, push bikes and a few, um, obviously, little baby hot rods there as well. And these, um, the BMXs and also these pushies are becoming a big thing at all these shows. Everywhere I go, there seems to be a whole range of them. And of course, the Harleys nowadays, look at the size of these. So quite a few shops in Australia now starting to specialise. And check out the width of the back wheel on that, and then you'll see the length of it. And the paintwork on the frame and all this on, on this was really something special. So we're going to run through some bikes now. So this was a, um, like I said, motorbike alley and a good range of um, older style builds and also some um, current super blinged up engraved type jobs. This show really does have a good vibe about it. And I mean, if you came to this show and said there was nothing for me to see, then I don't know what you're even out doing at a car or, or a custom show because the range of, of vehicles, bikes and cars was outstanding at this event. Spokes on the wheels on this bike got me. I think I'll go in for a close up here in a minute. They were like a twisted um, piece of steel, like solid. And I, I don't know whether they're a purchase thing or someone's made them, but I don't know that I've seen that before. And I thought that was pretty special. the late model. They're really starting to do some, some clever things with the colour and the use of all the different coatings, you know, the black, the gold, the, the coppers, all those sorts of things on these bikes. So there's them spokes again. Now I'm not sure how they did the, um, the paint or the treatment on this because it looked like it was engraved and then maybe painted or it could have even been copper that was then cleared. I'm not, you know, like copper metal, I'm not sure, but um, definitely had a unique look about it. The amount of detail on these bikes is incredible. Like I was saying, the engraving and then the, the actual paintwork and um, like the, the amount of hours in those guards and tank is just phenomenal. When this display was up and running, the back wheel on this bike was actually turning and it had neon well, LEDs nowadays. I imagine lights all up inside the wheels and stuff it was all pretty cool.
Now what we're going to look at now, this, this was my pick um, of the bikes and almost my pick of the show. When someone said to me, what did I like? The creativity in this bike and the amount of work done is amazing. So it looked to me to be a huge amount of handmade parts and things like the handle grips almost looked like a knife handle where they were made out of multiple, you know, timber and brass and aluminium and then the actual clutch levers and brake levers and then even inside those trumpets was painted and then a pin line painted inside that as well. The little brackets holding the number 82 sign on there were made turn timber. Just phenomenal amount of work and the more I stood there and looked at it, um, just sucked me in to, to look more and more and more at it. It's crazy. And if anyone's watched my biography, they'd know that my brother raced speedway in cars, but Heather and I have always loved solos, and um, these couple of Jawas were really something special. And I remember when the, um, they used to bring the European riders out to Australia and they used to come to Broken Hill, they used to have these brightly coloured fibreglass panels and all really did bring back some memories for me. So look at the paint and colours with that. So this is Saturday morning. Um, I'm in there early, it's probably only 7, 7.30, so a few guys just finalising their setups. A pretty reasonable size turbo hanging off that one. And see where that induction went in, it actually had a clear plate and all on it you could see inside. I mean, I really do get amazed on the creativity of people. You know, when you're trying to do something new, it's always so hard because it's almost like everything's been done, but I love to look at all these bikes because it gives me ideas when I'm playing around with cars. that I can transfer what I've seen on the bikes over to what I'm trying to do somewhere on my car or someone else's car to just be that little bit unique. So I think by memory this was a Yamaha, this one, a 500 Yami. Absolutely beautiful. And then the, the, the lid to go with it with a traditional style jacket. Fair bit of colour in this one. That's a lot of car in a big garage to put that one in. So 
So I'd say we're going to head into uh, Nostalgia Lane now. So they, at this event, each year they do something different. Last year it was primarily customs. This year it's a bit of a blast from the past and there's some hot rods that go back, you know, more than 30 years. And there's a whole range of those and I'm not going to be able to talk deeply about it because I don't necessarily know, have all the information, but um, we'll get into those in a minute. You see what I was saying about the light? It's a little bit harder to get these that depth of colour that you do when you're filming in the night time rather than during the day. I see quite a few cars that the last few events with the, the model on the engine like that uh, must be a thing that's starting to happen. Now this particular rod's in bare metal and I do a few close-ups because I was intrigued where they've actually done the chop and they've still got all their welds showing and I'd say it looks like they've probably used silicon bronze or something on the, the welding because it's a gold colour. So we'll get to that in a minute. Check out the detail inside. Love that microphone on the uh, the shifter, that's pretty cool. Someone might have got a punch set for Christmas, I think. So you can see the lines. Here we go, get even a bit closer where they, how many chops they've had to make to get everything to fit. And you know, normally you just see the, the cars finish and you go, oh, that's pretty cool. But the amount of effort to get something to look just like that is um, really cool to be able to see just how many times I've had to cut and shut and weld it to get it to all come together. Righto, so we're out in the nostalgia area now and um, I don't know, there was probably 30 or 40 cars there and um, some of them had signs and I've tried to capture that. That's obviously a new build, that one. So it was good to see on a couple of these old cars where they actually on their boards they had they were the custodian for the car because obviously they'd bought it at some stage and um, a bit like some of my old cars other people have got them but they're always probably going to be mine and those people have acknowledged that on their sign boards to say that they're the custodian for you know the original builder and they're very proud to own it and be able to look after it. Must have caught my eye then, had a bit of shiny paint I've taken off away from the cars. But there was probably, I don't know, half a dozen different people there that were either offering um, the different styles of paints to do this sort of custom work. You can see the amount of flake there and of course PPG have a, a big range in their vibrance range as well. So the Road Devils and I'll, once I get past these cars, you'll see there's a whole lot of memorabilia and trophies and, and t-shirts from some of the older events. So it really was part of the theme was um, Nostalgia Lane. So 83, doesn't sound that long ago to me, but that's um, 40 odd years ago. Some of the old hot rod mags. And there was a nice little collection of cars in this bar area. It's a wild 
cold looking thing. So another new build. A big injected hemi. So if you're enjoying the hot rods, I, I went to the Nationals um, up in Sydney over Easter and there's a couple of videos on the channel with those as well. So if you're enjoying the hot rod side of the channel, um, go and check out. There's a couple of event videos there with um, hundreds and hundreds of hot rods. This was looking pretty sinister, all in black. That'd be definitely a ride and a half sitting back there, wouldn't it? Now I filmed this um, drag car down at um, Showcars Melbourne, I think it was, and um, the fit and finish on this thing is amazing. You should see the amount of um, electrics we're going to zoom in and have a look at now, but all of the controls that operate um, these you know, current drag cars is quite phenomenal. Beautiful pipe work. I love looking at these sort of cars as well because once again you can you know, take little ideas away from, from looking at all the different styles of cars and builds to, to put into your own cars. A couple of boys with their packed lunches heading down the back. They had a HSV display at this event as well and there'll be a, a short video of that going up as well sometime in the next week or two. Now this thing's um, left hand drive and I imagine straight out of the States. If it's not, I apologise for that, but to me it just looked like that. And uh, I really enjoyed looking at this thing. It's um, really period correct looking drag car. Still got all the trim and stuff in it. Love the wheel combo. Of course, all the big car companies in the US had their own drag teams and all in the, in the, the 60s. Uh, that was a thing and they built a lot of special cars specifically for drag racing. And it's good to see something like this that's just done the way those cars would have been, I imagine. Now, here's some of those early rods. That three Stromy is um, becoming a big thing at the moment, a lot of rods with those. Now this was a bit of a feature on that custom video I was talking about earlier last year, but it was sort of stuck in a corner a little bit and I really couldn't get the same sort of quality footage I've got here now of it. And it was sitting under some, some down lights and really making them flames pop.
That's one hell of a commitment to do that much flame work on one car. Nice little utility that one, I like the look of that, the white walls. That looks like a full height top on that one, but channeled down over the chassis pretty heavily. This little um, blue hot rod here, Webby Speed Shop, I did manage to get a read of the sign and um, the Webster Brothers are obviously involved with this and um, it's just on the board there and it's got Rex's FJ and a bit of a chat about it but I would say it's um, quite some years back by the styling of it, very unique. Of course Tony Webster's still doing work nowadays I was caught up with him at um, Motorex a few years back. Now have a look at the overhead gear on this engine. Very unusual. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, someone might be able to make a comment and tell me what it is. And then it looks like it's got a bit of aircon and all hanging off the side of that as well. So that's a handful of low riders and um, something that's growing in Australia. They, they, was contacted about a show that's on at the entrance um, I think next month or the month after with a couple of hundred cars going where they actually have the hydraulic jumping competitions and all that sort of stuff and it clashes with something else I'm doing so I won't get there but um, they're really a, a styling of their own and um, I actually quite like the style I don't know that I would own one but I think the creativity and the, the cleverness in the way they go about it and Obviously they've been doing all of this um, engraving for a long, long time that's now catching on in other areas like the Harleys and stuff. I really did like the red trim in this. Look at that engraving, unbelievable. So I'd say this, um, I'm not sure what was in this, this car, but it's obviously a rod of some sort, but it had plenty of patina and I would say it's had plenty of use over the years as a driver. Now if my memory serves me correct, this was a giveaway car by one of the magazines or 
remember the, the Hot Rod Nationals used to always build a car and give it away um, every couple of years. And by memory, this was one of those cars. Say with the graphic design, it was probably um, in the 80s. If you're towing for work or play, make sure your vehicle is up to the task. Your gross vehicle mass can be upgraded to keep everything legal and above board. Find your nearest stockist at lovellsauto.com.au and talk to the professionals about getting your vehicle right for the job. So don't forget to support the boys if you're um, in need of an upgrade or if you're looking for any sort of springs or shocks for your hot rod or your car, they do coilover springs as well. Catch up with the boys at Lovells, they're the ones that are helping me to stay out doing what we're doing because there's obviously a reasonable cost involved to do what we're doing and with their support I'm able to continue to do that. Nice little hemi happening there. So it was interesting to see over the weekend quite a few elderly gentlemen like myself standing around telling stories and talking about these cars and when they seen them and you know when they were debuted and um, how those cars had progressed and who'd owned them and it's a really good opportunity and I think it's um, credit to the organisers of the show. Um, Andy does a great job in putting all these specialist cars together each year to give us something different to look at each year and not just the same old stuff over and over. Yeah, I'll see Cab. Bit of chrome and brass all combined together. Look at the wheel combination on that. We've got the almost the motorbike wheel on the front and then they're massive old um, look like indie profiles on the back. I remember making models just like that car as a kid. It brings takes me back a bit. I had to fight my way around this guy with the vacuum cleaner with his, his cord. He was um, in a world of his own, not too worried about what I was up to. It's an unusual build that one, and one of the old that one is. If anyone want to add any comments about these cars that they um, may have been involved in or whatever, please um, put it up. People like to read the comments people that are in the know. So originally from the 1950s if I read that right. Norm Longfield, eh? Strip T. Norm definitely created a lot of um, a lot of cars in his time. He had the the white and pink willies when I was doing, when I did my '63 Fairlane in the '90s. Of course, had some other um, really over the top builds over the years.
It's interesting to see how the stylings have changed over the years, isn't it? Now here's another low rider. Check out the boot on this thing. I don't think I'll flick the light on in a minute and whoa, it'll brighten it up like that. The time involved in these cars really is outstanding. I mean, I can't even comprehend some of the things that they do and how long it would take to do. You see that pin line there? It's got like a, um, a swelled effect through it. I don't know whether it was um, gold leaf or not. And then look at the amount of tape work in that. That's incredible. So obviously a new build here, this was um, part of a display stand for Smiths and um, a lot of that paint that we're seeing obviously is from those guys by their signs and um, yeah, very innovative interior. Check out the floor with the timber and then the aluminium framework around the outside like they use on the drag cars. And then just the amount of work on that tank and the trike. It's really awesome to see in real life. really is a, a pleasure and an honour to be able to wander around at night like this and take all of this in and be able to film it for you guys. Um, it's been a long time since I've looked so hard at so many of the cars. Normally I go to a show and spend my whole time talking to people, but now that I'm doing the filming, you do get to see every car and take it in and then you've got to go back because a lot of the time I'm just seeing it through the camera, off the back of the camera. But um, yeah, just so much stuff to see. It's incredible. A little Cleven in there with a ton of rim on it, very nice. You can see the, um, the sheet that this car is sitting on is made up of all the different t-shirts from a bygone era, all the different shows. And unfortunately old mate with the vacuum has got his cords everywhere for me, but I just needed to grab the footage anyhow. But yeah, all those different shows I've seen that done a few times, people put up on Facebook where they've either made a, a Duna cover or a, a wall hanging out of all their old shirts, which is a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah, this chassis in the build, um, I don't know this gentleman's name, I did meet him on the Saturday night, um, the function. Um, Steve Rich introduced me to him and he's a another tool mater, so Steve Rich that had has had some wonderful hot rods, um, was telling me about the car and I said I seen it and I filmed it and it just grabbed my attention because you can tell someone with those old school skills, all the bracketry, you know the sway bar and it's got the old oil um, dampeners and stuff on it and you can see all the rod ends and just the way everything's mounted, look at the way the straps on the tank, just very clever, um, very functional and I just find anything that's done with a, a good engineering background and functionality tends to look good as well. And of course being a bit unique with a four cylinder as well. So I'll be interested to see that car when it's done, that's for sure.
nice little original flathead in there, looks good. I'm a bit surprised I haven't doubled up here somewhere. You can tell I'm sort of wandering around backwards and forwards dodging people. So now we've, um, this would be sad day, so it's obviously felt, still fairly early in the morning, not many people around. And these are the cars that are under the outside in the bedding ring. And check out the, the barn find. So they have a, a traders area and I've got a few of those um, I think in this edition. Um, if you're doing a hot rod or a custom there's lots of um, things to see. And this particular um, salt flat racer I actually did a little program on that and that's on the channel as well from last year and they, were, they had it there complete doing startups. And then I think on the Sunday they took the covers off the actual car. It was actually built father and son team and they built that at home out of new new parts or new old parts that they had and they're obviously the um, agent for the quick changes as well. Really cool display. And then if you're looking for parts there's um, always someone to help with that. As I was saying, Andy, he always seems to find something different. And um, in the other part one, there's a really cool Porsche uh, that was unveiled. Um, check out this rig though, and all these Porsches. And they were doing some startups with one of them there a few times each day, something a bit different as well. These cars were all presented at a very, very high level. Absolutely beautiful cars. So that's the one there that they're starting up. So I thought I'd stick my head inside and um, have a look at the transporter as well. So in the middle of the day, this was just full of people. Had a pretty good crowd, they had some wonderful weather. It's a bit... Um, chilly in the morning but turned into lovely days. So it was good to see all these different companies supporting the show and without um, obviously the public turning up and paying to get in the door and also um, the traders 
and sponsors that help Andy to make the thing viable because as most of us know that's involved in this game that it's very difficult to make shows run even at a break even let alone make a few dollars and most of the promoters primarily involved for their love of, of what we do and the cars and if um, everything comes out the right way and all the planets align you might make a few bucks as well. Now this bespoke coach works you may or may not have seen this car being done on, on Facebook so Aiden's been um, at this for a while now and he's um, worked in a few shops but he's on his own now and got a bit of support from here in Forbes so I would say with he's been turning up on their, all their trade stands and he's been making that complete car from that shell from scratch so I grabbed an opportunity on the Friday night just to get a bit of close-up footage and all of it. So where you see the, the linishing, that's normally where they've welded. So that front guard would be made out of um, one, two, three, maybe four pieces. And then they'll TIG weld that all together. So it's all aluminium. Be all TIG together and, and then planished and put through the English wheel. And I'm not sure what chassis this is going on, but um, it's a very creative piece of work. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely superb. So this is the rest of that area. So on, on this side there's some, some clubs and a few more traders. This little stand here, um, you, a unique name with Rock Solid, um, and all people know my cars are all rock, started as Rock Solid. They do the manifolds that go on the late model to take the, the three Strommies. And then these guys were doing the, um, the brushwork and a bit of um, airbrush work as well. So all that en enamel pin lining. Now this group of cars was a club and it was really pleasant to see that they're a very young group of people um, when they're all there on Sunday getting organised to, to get out of there. Um, it was very pleasant to see a, a group of young people that are into all the old metal which was nice. You see there with the P plate on that one. There's a little bit of everything in that group. So then each day on the Saturday and the Sunday you can actually cruise in for the outside show and shine and, and attend the event. And I've took a bit of footage of that and Louise has just chopped that up and turned it into something for me. Um, and these people are just there for the day. Um, so if you haven't seen enough in all the halls, which takes a fair bit to see anyhow, all of these are then out in the car park and they have a special car park just for the chrome bumper. I tried to sneak in there with a the ute but I got turned away so that was a good thing, keeps it honest.
So all the cars out here have just been driven in for the day and um, I'm sure there would have been plenty of Facebookers and stuff sitting around out the front waiting for them all to leave as well. It's a bit of video coverage. So I was talking to the guy with the the big pano there, they just brought that in from the States only recently. Then you see a bit of this at the hot rod shows, the, the guy with the hat on here has got the, the pin line, I was having a chat to him as well, so he's just doing a couple of, couple of lines on this one for someone. So if I remember rightly, this was Saturday, so there would have been probably another whole different group of cars in on the Sunday, and I didn't get the opportunity to get out and um, and do that because I was on the stand at PPG and I needed to make sure I was there, catch up with people from the channel and talk to people about paint and colours and things. So as you can see, there was um, plenty of cars outside as well as inside. Well, that was certainly a diverse range of cars in that row, wasn't it? So if you're enjoying the show, make sure that you um, Take the opportunity next year to come out and have a look. I'm sure Andy will have something else new to go in that extra hall besides the show cars and something for us to take in and um, enjoy. Them single spinners seem to be following me around. I like the like that in the green, and there's another one.
Nice to see um, a lot of the younger generation there as well. It's always very pleasing for me to see um, you know, granddad, dad and the, the young bloke all checking out the cars. My passion come from my dad, I believe, and um, been introduced to all of these older cars and different styles and race cars and boats and all sorts of things. And I've been at it a long, long time myself now. So, So I would say we're getting pretty close to the end of this um, this video now because once we get through with the outside cars, I think we're just about done. And it's been a um, pleasure to once again bring to you just so many cars from this great event. My wife Heather there just keeping an eye out for me. Gonna put up with my um, obsession with all things motoring. So thanks again. Don't forget, click the like button if you get the opportunity and if you've got any comments about any of the cars or any questions about the cars or what we're doing, don't be frightened to ask. And if you do like the video and you've got mates that enjoy the same sort of thing, don't forget, share it with your mates. That'll help us to grow and make sure we can keep bringing it to you. And of course, we'd like to thank Lovells for this continued to support to enable us to continue to do it. So thanks for sharing with us your bit of time. Subscribe to the channel and bye bye for now.